Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Paddock carried out his shooting massacre. This as President Trump prepares to meet with survivors and first responders. I'm Mola Lenghi with the latest from Las Vegas. As Las Vegas officials describe how many weapons the shooter had and how he modified them, the debate over gun control continues on Capitol Hill. I'm Seth Lemon in Washington with more coming up. 6.30 on this Wednesday, Chad Lehman, Missy O'Malley with you. Matt has our forecast. Top story again this morning. President Trump travels to Las Vegas later today following the deadly mass shooting at a country music concert there this week. That's right. Police are offering up new information on Sunday night's massacre as investigators prepare to question the girlfriend of the gunman behind the attack. CBS's Mola Lange has our latest from Las Vegas, Nevada. Las Vegas police have released body camera footage from Sunday night's shooting. You can hear officers warning each other after realizing the shots were being fired from up high, somewhere inside the Mandalay Bay Hotel. Hey, they're shooting right at us, guys. Everybody stay down. Stay down. As President Trump gets set to visit Las Vegas today to meet with survivors and first responders, investigators are releasing more information about how the shooting unfolded. These are photos from inside the shooter, 64-year-old Stephen Paddock's hotel room. Police say he fired on and off for between 9 and 11 minutes, had bump fire stocks, legal devices that enable semi-automatic guns to fire continuously as fully automatic. Paddock also brought surveillance equipment. There were two cameras located in the hallway so that the suspect could watch as law enforcement or security approached his room. And there was another camera placed inside the hotel room door peephole so that he could see down the hallway. Law enforcement sources tell CBS there have been more than 100 suspicious reports of Paddock in the days leading up to the shooting, transferring large amounts of cash overseas. Some of that money went to the Philippines, where Paddock's girlfriend was staying. Las Vegas police say Paddock's girlfriend, Mary Lou Danley, is a person of interest. A U.S. official tells CBS she flew back from the Philippines and landed in L.A. overnight. She was met at the airport by FBI agents. Mola Lenghi, CBS News, Las Vegas. Now, at this time, it's unclear whether Danley has agreed to be interviewed by authorities, and if so, when that interview will take place. And now the tragedy in Las Vegas is renewing gun debate on Capitol Hill. In a late-night press conference, Las Vegas officials revealed they found nearly four dozen guns stashed in three separate locations by the gunman. But they also described how the shooter legally modified his weapons. Seth Lemon has more this morning from Washington. ATF agents say police have recovered 47 various weapons owned by the Las Vegas gunman. The gunman purchased rifles, shotguns, and pistols. Investigators say none of the guns appear to be homemade. Instead, police found 12 bump stocks, devices added to semi-automatic weapons that allow rapid firing like fully automatic ones. Bump fire stocks, while simulating automatic fire, do not actually alter the firearm to fire automatically, making them legal under current federal law. The shooter, perched from his 32nd floor hotel suite, had a clear shot at the 22,000 people packed tightly into the concert, including Bruce Ewer, who survived. Selfish, evil man, and he's gonna try to shoot. It was like shooting human fish in a barrel. House Democrats plan to hold an event on the Capitol steps this morning, pushing legislation to strengthen background checks and establish a congressional committee on gun violence. Although opinions on gun control are split, Speaker of the House Paul Ryan pointed to new legislation being implemented. Mental health reform is a critical ingredient to making sure that we can try and prevent some of these things from happening in the past. We need to have that conversation, but right now it is about, for me, bringing relief to those families that are still looking for their loved ones. Hundreds still trying to figure out if someone they know was a victim that day. Seth Lemon for CBS News, Capitol Hill. Now we're told police from Chicago to Austin, Texas, say they're increasing their presence ahead of large events planned in cities this weekend across the nation. It's so tough. Meantime, uh, 634, uh, 
chilly out there this morning. The one bright spot, the moon overhead, mm. is glistening off of the ice around. It, was yeah, it really was. Yeah. It was. Uh, it was very cold. A lot of ice out there uh, on Especially our grass. Our <laughs> yeah, a lot of sprinklers still rolling. Uh, <laughs> basically, dealing with cold temperatures this morning. There may be some patchy fog in some of those low-lying areas. Uh, keep that in mind. So areas near uh, water or into those valleys could at least have a little bit of fog early on. Temperatures into the low 20s for the morning. You see uh, the skies are pretty clear as we're waiting for the sun to head over the horizon. There's a good chance that we'll see some scattered showers trying to work their way through the area for the afternoon into the evening. May allow a little bit of light snow into the overnight. We're going to talk more about what you can expect over the upcoming days, including your weekend forecast. It's all coming up from the Billion Auto Weather Patio coming up in just a couple minutes. Thanks, Matt. Now 635 on this Wednesday, the Montana Family Foundation hosted its annual banquet in Bozeman last night at the Grand Tree Inn. It was a fundraiser for the passing of Initiative 183, also known as the Locker Room Privacy Act. It's caused a lot of controversy, especially within the transgender community. Some turned out to protest against that bill. MTN's Caitlin Corbett has more. Initiative 183, also known as the Montana Locker Room Privacy Act, is an initiative to designate facilities that can only be used by members of one yeah, sex. That prohibits anyone born of the opposite sex from using them. This would mean that transgender people would be unable to use the bathroom or locker room of their choice. The initiative was approved for signature gathering back in July, and now the Montana Family Foundation, who is sponsoring the initiative, is attempting to gather the necessary funds and signatures to get it to the next year's ballot. But members of the community came to protest the foundation's fundraiser and the initiative, saying they hope to protect the dignity and safety of the transgender and queer community. Well, we believe that everyone should be free to be who they are, especially in Montana. Um, and that includes rights to access to facilities and spaces. Um, trans people are Montanans and they deserve the same rights to facilities and safe spaces as everyone else. Now, we did reach out to the Montana Family Foundation. That group declined to comment for this story. And the Montana State University professor and seven students that were a part of the international team that contributed to a study of gravitational waves won a Nobel Prize. The MSU scientist didn't sh win a share of the prize, but they did help with that gravity research. The team worked with other scientists to learn more about outer space and black holes and gravity waves. Well, I was getting some uh, texts from some of my former students uh, saying, you know, thanking me for getting into the, you know, it was uh, thanks for getting me into this game. It's, it's been a great ride. So they're all, you know, very excited. And uh, I think they should be very proud of, of the contributions they've made. They absolutely should be. And if you'd like to read more about that gravity research, please head on over to our websites for all those details. Elsewhere, we're learning more about the woman who will be Bozeman's new city manager. MTN's Morgan Davies has been following the city manager search and has more on why commissioners unanimously chose Andrea Surratt. Andrea Surratt was chosen over David Buckingham as Bozeman city manager last night. Now, Andrea Surratt comes from North Carolina, where she has plenty of experience in local city government. Uh, particularly the cities in, uh, uh, on the coasts, um, deal with a lot of problems um, that we will see in the future and I think her experience will will help us anticipate those so just as Bozeman is seeing continuous growth in population Hickory North Carolina also experienced an increase in growth from 2000 to 2009 the same years that Surratt was in the role of city planner and then assistant city manager so she has been the person uh, on the spot in charge, uh, which I think is very important. With Bozeman trying to find ways to expand without losing its character, Surratt told me in a previous interview that she believes she can make it work. I think any good community has a balance of many types of people, and so the, the goal would be really just to make sure that people are comfortable where they live, that they have options for the, where they live, and that they find a, a place in the community that they can serve. So. I think Bozeman has a lot of that already, and my job would be just to increase the citizen participation and introduce them to things that the city is offering. The city is currently in contract negotiations with Surratt, but Mayor Taylor wanted to remind the people of Bozeman 
how important their role was in this search. I, I'm appreciative of the fact that a lot of people across the country wanted this job. That means something as well about us, and we should remember that. And as we learn more about Surratt's arrival in Bozeman, of course, we will keep you updated on air and online. Reporting in the studio, Morgan Davies, MTN News. As it stands right now, Mayor Taylor did tell Morgan that he expects Surratt to be here by November 1st. I think we should have her on the morning show. I think we could try to do that. I think, I think we could pull some strings. I, we'll work on that. And donations <laughs> continue to roll in for our Montana Wildfire Relief Fund. As of Tuesday, received just 20 donations as of on Tuesday, excuse me, donations totaled up for 2,485 bucks. Our grand total stands at 1,155 donations, now amounting to $306,520.74. The Wildfire Relief Fund is a partnership between the Montana Television Network and the Montana Community Foundation. There's still an active $50,000 match and you can still contribute. The match means your donation will be doubled. Just head on over to KBZK or KXLF slash wildfire fund. Keep it coming in, folks. That's Keep awesome stuff. Keep it coming. $306,000 and 74 cents. And 74 cents. That's, that's what awesome. you contributed. That's, that's so <laughs> generous. We appreciate it. Stay with us. In just a moment, we have the latest from Capitol Hill, where the CEOs of both Equifax and Wells Fargo are in the hot seats. But first, we see what your top stories are this morning at CBS This Good Morning. Good morning ahead on CBS This Morning. Nora continues our coverage from Las Vegas. She talked with a victim about how she survived in the moments after the attack and new details on how the shooter prepared and his girlfriend who returned to the United States overnight. See you at 7.